Uh, if you haven't laughed at all yet, I'm assuming it's just because you're still trying to figure out ethnically what I am. <laughs> The best way to describe what this face means is half of me built the railroads in this country and the other half told the first half to do that. <laughs> My mom hates that joke a lot. <laughs> Guess which one she is. <laughs> On my white side, it's a lot of German. Very, very German. I speak German, almost fluently. I speak it, I speak it pretty much fluently. So after the show, if you speak German, uh, don't talk to me because I'm lying. But <laughs> I speak it pretty fluently, and I love the language. I think it gets a bad rap because here they just show us German propaganda, basically. Like, they all sound like, ah, like mean. When you listen to the language, it's kind of nice. And also, their language gives you an insight into how they think. The efficiency, literal, that's very... German. For example, look at, the, look at the translations from English to German, literally, and you will see how German minds work, all right? We say things in our language, in English, like, have fun, right? That's what you guys are doing now. Fun is just something you can have. You want some fun? Here, here, take some. Oh, look, I found some fun back here. You want it? Go take it. Germans say, mach Spaß, which literally translates to make fun. Because you're not allowed to just have fun. In Germany, oh, you think you can just have the fun lying around? Or you think the fun just grows on the fun tree, and then you just climb the fun tree like a little fun monkey, and you grab the fun fruit, and mm, this is delicious fun fruit. And the fun juice drips down the fun chin and the fun chest onto the fun ground. You think that's how this works? You didn't even plant that fun seed. That's someone else's. It grew into the fun tree, and you stole the fun fruit. You are a fun thief, and you steal fun. That is who you are. I wouldn't put it past a German person to go to a little girl, like four-year-olds for a birthday party, and be like, you little girl, what is all this? Ribbons, cake, presents? All for you, for fun? You know the only person who made fun on this day, who did work on this day? Your mother, this iPad is hers now. Thank you very much. Here you go, mama. Have fun with Candy Crush. You, here's a stick, here's a knife, go whittle something, make some fun. What's your high score? My mom is an immigrant fresh off the boat from Hong Kong. She's Chinese. In case you didn't get the railroad thing. Um, <laughs> and I feel for her, because she told me a lot of like, you know, moving to the Midwest, she told me a lot of like horror stories about the racism she had to encounter when she was here. So I was fully on board with the Stop Asian Hate Movement. Like I was 100% on board with that. And my favorite story was about the 76-year-old Chinese grandma who got blindside punched but then grabbed a stick and beat her assailant into a stretcher. <laughs> now, if you're not clapping or laughing and you didn't like that, th think about if someone punched your grandma and then your grandma just went Rambo on them. How would you react? <laughs> You'd be like, yo, grandma, you got this. I'm gonna hang back. <laughs> Scared of you more than ever. But here's why that's my favorite story. Because if that assailant, if that dude was a little bit less racist, just a little bit, he would have known that a stick is a minority grandparent's favorite thing to beat people with. <laughs> what? That's her secret weapon. That's like punching a gremlin near water. What are you doing? <laughs> it's the same thing. In both instances, you're punching something ancient, tiny, and Asian. <laughs> that if it touches the thing next to it, has the power to suddenly destroy you. It's insane. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this woman's been beating kids since the Ming Dynasty. You don't think she can take out a millennial from the Bay Area? <laughs> That's nothing. That is nothing to her. Catholic nuns watch YouTube tutorial videos of old Asian women just beating people with sticks like, yo, Mei Ling got hands. <laughs> what do you think, sister? Subscribe? Yeah, I got this. <laughs> I don't even think she picked up the, the, the stick. I think she got punched, landed, and then like Thor's hammer, she just reached down and <laughs> bah, just knocked him across the freeway. May link the life. <laughs> the only thing that would have made this story any better, the only thing, is if she would have handled the interview afterwards like a pro athlete. 
because she was, you know, quavering. She's an old lady, but that would have been awesome is if the reporter came up and was just like, so how did you fight off someone who was bigger, faster, and stronger than you? And she just stole the mic out of the hand and it was like, it ain't about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the size of the fight in the dog. Just drop the mic, drop the stick, off to the locker room. Mei Ling's out. Mei Ling's coming back in the second half swinging. Who wants some? Who wants some? <laughs> but because I grew up in the Midwest, you know, I, wish, I just wish I knew more about my Chinese heritage. You know what I mean? I don't know as much as I want to, but I do know that whoever invented Tai Chi was just the best at not touching things in public restrooms. <laughs> and apparently we all learn from the same master, right? The same Shifu, the same sensei, because we all do the same thing. And if you don't agree with me, you're lying. This is any of us trying to get out of a public restroom stall. All right, I'm good. get for tweeting on the toilet. Oh. <laughs> That's how Tai Chi was invented. It wasn't one Asian monk who trained in the mountains for 20 years. It was one trucker who stopped at a pilot station in Colorado. <laughs> this is like, not today, use Band-Aid? Get out of my face. Getting out of here unscathed. <sighs> it's weird, people forget. People forget culture and heritage are different, right? You know what I mean? Heritage is just, you know, your blood, who you are. You might be a little Irish, a little Scottish, a little, you know, German, Chinese, whatever you are. But your culture is like who you grow up around. And I think that influences who you are more than anything, right? Your friends, your family, the people you're with right now, it's your culture. In Indianapolis, it was all black and white people. So I consider myself very culturally black and white. You know, I talk very white around white people, as you can tell. And I talk very black around black people. Always in awkward silence, every show I've done. Every time I say that. <laughs> I don't care, judge me all you want. Those are my friends and family. I don't even care. You can judge me, all right? I say things like Fidna. I'm Fidna, go do some comedy. Um, when I want someone to repeat something, I say, give it to me one mo again. And they usually do. Uh, and most importantly, when I want to get at the end of a story, but I don't feel like telling the middle of the story, I say things like woo woo to propel me to the end of that story. All right, confused white people, let me explain. Um, <laughs> woo woo is just the black version of the phrase, one thing led to another. That's all that is. It's just to take up 80% of a middle of a story you don't feel like telling. Here's a black dude telling a story. Hey man, me and my boys cruising up to this club, and all of a sudden it's like woo woo woo. And dudes who came up, he said, ah, and I was like, ah, woo woo woo. My friend's like, whoop de woo. And dudes like, ah, woo woo woo, on this end, ah, ah, And then I fell off a bridge. And you're like, <laughs> You don't want to clear up the middle of that? You went to a club and then bridge falling off. That's how that story went. If it was a book, it'd be prologue, woo woo, epilogue, end of book. Why are they building bridges near clubs? What are you, what city are you in? You just never know. As a matter of fact, that's how I thought Obama should have just pacified white people who didn't like him in his speeches to just confuse them and leave. How great would that have been? He just goes up there, uh, listen. Uh, now, uh, they questioned uh, my health care. Uh, and you know what? They questioned uh, my birth certificate as well. And uh, you know, to those people, I just have uh, one thing to say. Woo, uh, woo, 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 legalize gay marriage. Thank you very much. <laughs> We'd all been like, I don't know what his platform is, but I'm voting for this guy. <laughs> I didn't understand any. And the best part is they would have to teach that to your kids in history classes later. Some social studies teacher would have been looking at your kids like, oh, turn to page four. And in 2012, Obama enacted the Woo Woo Act as a legitimate defense in a court of law. Turn to page five. 
<laughs> the weird thing is the only people that ever gave me any grief for talking like that were not black people. It was white people. And I was like, you don't have a dog in this fight. You can't get offended on someone else's behalf. It doesn't make sense. My black friends they didn't care. They just knew that was me being me. And I think they understood it was a sign of respect. Really think about it. If someone from another country came to this one and asked you for directions and whatever your his accent is, I don't know how you get to the corner of this street, and you just rattle off fluent English, it's going to be too much overload for them. They're going to be like, I don't understand. No. Slow down, please. But if you look them dead in the eyes and talk to them just like them, and you're like, yes, you do go to this corner of the street, and you take a three left, and a four right, and you go backwards, and the fours, they're gonna be like, you are best American, I understand everything, everything, this way, right? Yeah. If you don't believe me, I have to do that to my own mom. I know I'm right about this. I'm just like, yeah, mom, you're cooking. Just take the chicken, put it in 300 degrees for 30 minutes. She's like, uh, I don't. And I'm like, put it in at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. She's like, gotcha. <laughs> That's why I don't even think you should teach foreign languages in schools anymore. You should just teach broken English and other people's accents. <laughs> Why not? Spanish 101 course. Today, class, we're covering confrontations. Repeat after me. That's no yours, Holmes. Now you go. Very good class. A plus. Dismissed early. Let's go home.